Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. That's my website. This is Let Me Boy You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So hello. Hello. This is Saturday's magazines. Yeah. So what I'm going <laughs> I don't know why I'm making weird noises. So I'm just gonna go through some magazines. I think I'm gonna do this on a, like a Saturday thing. Saturday's magazines. And I'm using uh an app and I'm just gonna it's loads of titles, so I don't know what I'll choose. <sighs> I don't know. I want to choose something that's up to date and I'll just have a look through. I've done this before. I've done a magazine before. What should I do? Um, closer. We got, oh, I don't know. So, um, I, yeah, 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 yeah. So my website is getting more and more complete. The all the new newest recordings are up there. You can download all four versions for free of the MP3s. You can also stream the audio and stream the ten hour video on the website. Uh, I'll make a ten hour version of each recording for YouTube. Make a video for YouTube, and so that's uploaded every day on YouTube. Well, every day I make a new one. Um, so yeah, it's a dark screen, so it's 10 hours long. The first 10 seconds is just an image, you know, the video image, and then it just goes to black, black screen. I also have a Facebook page, a Facebook group rather, Jason Newland's Boring Group. That's for my, that's for the... That's, what is it? It's for anyone who wants to join, really. If you're an avid listener, then that's the place to be. It doesn't mean you have to be called avid. And and that's it, really. So, what am I grateful for? What am I going to, let me, let me try and, I keep forgetting to do my gratitude at the beginning of the recording. So I'm going to try and do that. Uh, so today, what am I grateful for? Um, uh, I'm grateful that the, I'm grateful, oh, it's terrible, isn't it? I can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm grateful for, It shouldn't be this difficult. Okay. I just don't want to kind of make something up. I want to do it like genuinely. Be I don't want to be I want to be genuine. What am I grateful for? I'm grateful for being able to do a recording every day this week. I don't know how I've really managed to do it but I'm grateful for people listening because it wasn't for you listening there'd be no point in me doing this and the you know the more the more often I make a recording the more people listen so it, you know I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful for how things are coming along with the the connections between the website, the podcasts, the video, YouTube channel, and, you know, sort of cross-referencing them and putting links here and there. And it's just, it takes it takes forever to do it. But it is starting to come together. Yes. So, yeah, cool. I've, uh... Oh, dear. 
I've actually had over 400 visitors to my website today, so I don't quite know. I've started putting links on my YouTube channel to the actual page. So, let's for, for example, today I, well, this morning I uploaded yesterday's Q and A Friday, made a video this morning, put it onto YouTube, and then I've put a link to my website page where that's on there. The video is on there. Also, you can download the four, four different versions of the recording. You know the normal one, one with music, five hours and ten hours. And yeah, I've had a lot of people from all over the world visit. So that seems to be quite a, a good idea to have done that. There's still a lot more to do, but it's definitely a good start. I've managed to do 150 videos so far to, you know, put the links on. 150? Is it 200? Nearly 200, I think. <sighs> so, what should I do? Oh, oh. It's weird because I yawn and then I stop yawning. I yawn a few times and, I mean, you could argue that everyone, no one yawns all the time continuously. I'm not saying that I would normally yawn all the time continuously. But there's something about when I start making a recording, I do have a tendency of yawning. And that's always been the case right from the very start of when I began recording myself talking all those years ago. And even when I used to do group relaxation sessions in person, I'd always yawn. I'd like, uh, I'm actually proper yawn. That's a pretend yawn that turned into a real yawn. I wonder if I pretended to be intelligent. Would that make me really intelligent? Uh, it's worth a try. So, let's have a look. What have we got here? I don't know. We've got categories. So, I want countries. I'm going to go UK. Just, or I could go America. I don't know if America's on there. Canada. Let's go Canada. Yeah. It just, or oh, I was going to say, it needs to be written in English. But I just rem remembered that uh, there's a possibility some of it could be in French. Which means I can't read it. So the the Can Canadian magazines are Global Heroes, Taste and Travel, Celtic Life, Folk Life, and Live Well. Okay, so. I might go for a different country then. Neanderthal. No, I mean, Netherlands. Let's say if they've got any English. Art doc. Oh, I think they might. I think they might only give me the ones that are actually written in English. Let's have a look. Let's open it up. Um. Mm, 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 mm. Do, 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 do. Oops. Do, 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 do. Oh, damn it. Okay. After all that, oh, I've got to do something. Wait a second. Do, 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 dum, dum, da. Da, 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 dum, dum, da. If there's anything that you want, ooh, ooh. is there anything I can do? Ooh, ooh. That's weird. Okay, I can't do the magazines or the papers because the account's closed. Damn you. Read. Nope. Let's look for a way around it. Okay. 
Let's see if this will work. It's possible. It's possible. Okay, I managed to get round it. Okay, right, let's go back. Go back. So these are magazines, new to you, chat, because I've read chat before, haven't I? Okay, let's have a look, horse. Is it is it in inside G.D. Walden? Talking to Mike. Oh no, it's how wonderful to see that everyone stands together. Right, it is in English, but it's about horses. And I'm not prejudiced against horses. Trust me, I'm not. Right, so let's have a look at Germany. See what's in that. The bedwet, no, not bedwetter, the Berliner. Um, let's have a look. What is this? The best of Berlin, arts, culture, and uh, people. Berlin in England since 2002, October 2024. Oh, Berlin in English. Okay. The Berliner. Kinder rave. Berlin has a party for everyone, including your toddler. Avenue of the Sun, the diverse history of Neukölln's Sonnenlali. Skin in the game, scenes from Berlin's tattoo convention. And the big headline on there is the freaks come out at night. More than a century of Berlin's cabaret is still the wildest show in town. It's printed on recycled paper. That's good to know. Are you ready? The most aspiring Berlin experience. The upside down. I don't know what that is. It's not aimed at me. I don't think any kind of nightclub's gonna be aimed at me. Ah be de be 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 de be 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 So I think this is written by from the looks of it. Yeah, I think this is written by an English person. That's living in Bert. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Taco Thursdays. 2.50 tacos from a 17 to 20 H. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Right. Okay. Let's see what the trash in their reputation. Are Jewish still out? Whether to control Berlin's increasing raccoon population or let them run wild. So do you have wildlife in Germany? I didn't, I don't know, I just... It's weird, it's, it's, just, put it, it's a silly question really. Raccoons. I just didn't... I didn't mean, do you have forests and stuff? I've never been. It just, I thought it was kind of all kind of cities and stuff. No, I haven't been, so I don't know. I'm sure it's amazing, I just haven't uh, been. So, so apparently, to, according to this one of these people, should the city drive forward with its A100 plans or hit the brakes? The Senate's 1.2 billion euro plans to extend the inner city autobahn have been met with environmental concerns and fear for the already endangered club scene. We stopped by the Freudrich Sane neighborhood the motorway would cut through, where some were protesting to ask Berliners what they think of the project. And one person called Kira, the club and techno scene is the reason why people move to Berlin in the first place. That is why city all about. And now with the construction of the A100, the government is trying to get rid of it. That's ludicrous, mate. So that was uh, that was from her. What else? Uh, Tabia from Hamburg says, uh, 
The A100 is an important symbol for the climate crisis. We have to get our fossil fuels and individual motor traffic and subsidies, public transport instead. I realised that I started doing a silly voice and that person was talking very seriously about the environment and I decided just to stop talking. <sighs> so this is one, a tattoo. As seen, as seen at Tattoo Convention Berlin, we stopped by the world's largest running celebration of ink to talk to veterans and first-timers about their passion for body art. Um, right, Magneto, 76, model. So he's 76 and he's a model. That's not bad. From Berlin. He says, I didn't get my first tattoo until I was in my late 40s. Now I'm the most tattooed man in the country. Over 98% of my body is covered in ink. It's what I'm living for. Well... If it's what you're living for, you've only got 2% left. So, take your time, my friend, to do the other 2%. That's what I'm saying. Don't rush it. Because if that's all you're living for... Uh, see, I'm not... I don't... I don't see it. The V fair. I don't... I, I, tattoos can... I, I just... Uh, like the whole face covered um, it's just not for me really it's just I mean some would argue that it would improve my appearance and they may be correct but it's not really yeah it's not really my thing it's yeah it's not I got one tattoo that was kind of enough to be fair Um. Yeah, I mean, just I thought about having like a silly tattoo on just below my belly button saying, please don't stop. But you know, that, that'd just be silly. I just, I don't think, I don't know. See, my friend downstairs, he, he had a lot of tattoos. He was actually a tattooist. He had tattoos on his face, but it wasn't like his whole face. It was just part of his face and I don't know like on his neck and his whole hands were covered and his his legs and his arms you know he was, he was pretty much I'd say kind of 50% of his body probably had tattoos on yeah I'd say I'd say at least 40% covered in tattoos but 50% of the body as in I don't know because he did a lot of his own tattoos uh, the amount of time he dislocated his shoulder trying to do his back uh, Manfred 69 retiree from Lebanon says uh, I, I'm here these are German people I guess I don't know they might not be I'm here with my daughter and grandkids I've always wanted to get a tattoo and today just finally felt like the right time and place. I'm stoked. So that's good. But he's just got one tattoo. But he looks happy enough. Janice, 29, a tattoo artist from Berlin, says, uh, As an artist, cre creative expression is super important to me. I love getting a first idea from a client. But ultimately, they trust me with my artistic vision. So, I think you would have to have a lot of trust in somebody to do a tattoo. I mean, just to spell it correctly. Um, I think there was, uh, there was someone... 
they had someone like really special, like um, an aunt passed away, so they they got a tattoo, and it was like a, like a love heart. But then rest in peace, or whatever. But an aunt uh, Rose or something. I think it was Aunt Rose, but they misspelled the word aunt, and it didn't come out so good. Christian Thirty asks. Uh, art tattoo artist from Denmark says, uh, "Shall do the Denmark accent." Getting tattooed is a lifetime journey. To I don't know if that's. <laughs> I don't know what any accents are. Getting tattooed is a lifetime journey towards feeling more comfortable in your own skin. I got my first piece thirteen years ago. At this every this very convention, now I feel more confident than ever. Was that a good Denmark accent? And then you got um, oh, someone at the door. Someone at the door. Right. Okay, it's not not for me. Good. You got Momo says, culture and tradition. Are extremely important to us. As a Maori, these tattoos are our. I, I can't do it anymore, can I? He just said, as, as a Maori, I think I'm making fun, so I'll stop. I'll just do an all accent. These tattoos. I can't stop, sorry. These tattoos are our roots, our way of life. We are warriors. It's about harmony, joy, passion. Our connection to nature and each other. So yeah, I'd Maori is that the is that the New Zealand Aboriginals or is it the the Australian one? I I lose track. Maori. I lose because I know there's the. I don't think they're even called Aboriginals anymore. I mean, it's just another word for original, the original people, isn't it? I think, or an Aboriginal. Aborigines. Aboriginals. Uh, I don't know. Del32, dig, 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 says, he's from Chile, he says, uh, I am originally from Chile, but the, the style of this tattoo is Mexican, and uh, uh, choose the tattoos are not about where you're from, but what style speaks to you and your your personality? Oh, oh, he's from Chile. Oh, I thought he said he is Chile. Oh, I thought he was cold. Um, then you got Briz, Bridget sixty one, a tattoo artist and painter, Jutterborg. The scene. Okay, that's not a good voice, is it? The scene that really commercialized over the years. Nowadays. People want everything to be quick and cheap, but true art takes time. We should try to reclaim the joy for the craft and the mindfulness that used to make every tattoo a unique piece of art. Well, a lot of tattoos are just copies of other tattoos, though, aren't they? You know... This tattoo I got was just something that was already on the book. I said, I'll have that. And he said, all right. So there wasn't really, it was just colouring in on from his part. There was no artistic requirement, really, other than the basics of doing a tattoo. So it wasn't, this is one of the, one of the easiest tattoos he probably ever could have done. I can't imagine he even enjoyed doing it, to be honest. Especially as I kept farting. Ing, 31, tattoo artist from Nuremberg, says, uh, These conventions... I can't help it, I've got to stop. Okay. These conventions are a great way to connect to other artists and get some fresh inspiration. It's really about the community for me. And Thor, oh come on, that's not his real name. 28, from Denmark. I suppose it could be Thor was from Denmark, wasn't he? So Dawn said, Thor says, uh, For me, getting inked 
has a lot to do with body dysmorphia. I would uh, say, I can't, you can't do a silly voice if they talk about serious subjects. Damn it. Ooh, Velvet Underground. Oh. Uh, I don't know what that's all about. Dress to Express. Are you craving a shopping spree but don't want to feed into the fast fashion frenzy? Here's an opportunity to unleash your inner Carrie Bradshaw without losing karma points. Carrie Bradshaw, is that the woman on that 90s sitcom? Yeah. Here comes a time. Okay, right, you want to. Okay, that's it. You want to cuddle now. All right, then. So let's have a look. For the record. There comes a time in every aspiring DJ's life when uploading your latest tech house mix to SoundCloud and sending a link to your mum and three closest friends simply doesn't cut it anymore. Let's get physical. Launched last spring in a former cable factory near the Spree, the independent vinyl pressing plant Objects Manufacturing lets you indulge the deepest analogue... Cool. How many people have got a record player? By hands, put your hand up if you've got a record player. Because I thought about making, or even a, a CD player. Has anybody got a CD player anymore? Because I thought about making my recordings available as CDs, or maybe even vinyl. There is a way of doing it, like on my website. So I don't know if anyone's interested, I could do that. Oh, it's got here Commodore upscale Mexican dining is still a rarity in Berlin but Commodore is filling the gap next to standard tacos there's a tangy spicy cavinch or cavich garlicky fish tostadas and soul swarming warming Diary, not diary, but burria. The meat and fish is all local, as is most produce. Their Sunday brunch offers chilaquiles and margaritas. Doesn't the fish generally have to be quite local anyway? Or maybe I'm wrong. I just figured that because my experience of fish is it doesn't uh, doesn't last that long. What? What's this going on? A pretty ugly. This ugly beauty is the beauty world's first firmament. And Berlin now artist Camilla Ing Volberg Bert is one of the shining stars. Ugly beauty. What's that about? I might have some of that. I might make a fortune. Become a model. This is the dawn of the age of ugly beauty. In the last year, we've fallen in love with rodent men. What's, what the heck's a rodent man? Fall, followed sad girl and sunburnt, not sun-kissed. Makeup tutorials, eyewitness Jojo, Dojo Cat, Sunny Mascara at the Met. Gala and we're both cat. This is about oh, this is about fashion, isn't it? I don't know anything about fashion. I know even less about fashion. So oh, what the heck is all that about? It is because yeah. So it's just very creative kind of. It's about nails. It's, <laughs> it's about nail design. And yeah, probably not my forte, as it were. Oh, there's a picture of some trees. Oh, Germany does have some trees. Blimey, there's even a lake and a house and a bridge. That's lovely. It's got some lots of lots of different colourful trees. And it's quite nice, you know. I might go and have a look, go and go and visit. I've never been, never been to uh, to Germany. 
Um, okay. Everyone does it, but does everyone do it right? Here's how to become a more conscious consumer of uh, etiquette entertainment. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, what? The, expert, the experts who ask, Medita Oeming is an independent porn scientist. <laughs> a porn scientist? Come on. I mean, I suppose I am as well then, if that's if that's if it works that way. Dear Pansy, this is the Aragony Aunt answers your burning questions on all things love, lust, drag queen style, sass or solace, what will it be? Okay, dear Pansy. So dear Pansy okay, we'll do the do a voice for this one. Dear Pansy, I'm in my thirties. And I'm just coming to terms with my bisexuality. I have come to. I have just. I have just started hooking up with other guys. But you haven't ever. Okay, the answer's way too long. I do like. Are you need to burn in there? Oh, okay, signs of the times. The avenue of the sun. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Should we do? Oh look, they've even got statues. There's a statue of a. I don't know what it is. Someone holding a stick. And they've got wings on them. Very high up. It's lovely. Lovely statue. I don't know what it's of. Uh, okay, oh, wow. So, 36, the Babysitter's Club. Yeah, I'm going to move on from this magazine. I don't, it's not really, I don't really kind of get what it's about. It's, there's a lot of kind of, I sp oh, there's a picture of a man with nails in his nose. Come on. I mean, what? why? Just. See, it's weird, because like, he's got, He's basically got tattoos all down his neck on his chest, and he's got two nails. He's got a, a, a nose ring, you know, like a cow. He's got a nose ring, another piercing in his lip, and he's got two big nails sticking out of his nostrils. And he's got a look on his face. And do you, do you think he's actually thinking, yeah, this is it. This is the look. This is the one. I mean, they're gonna love me. They're gonna love me down the pub. It's, <laughs> it's. Uh, I don't know. It just, I don't care about piercings and stuff. I'm like, just. But why have big, massive nail? Like, no, I'm talking about fingernails. I'm talking about like nail nails, from like a hammer nail nail thing. Huge thing sticking out. It looks like an accident. Like, you know, someone got carried away, pierced him, and perhaps picked up the wrong gun, picked up a nail gun instead of a a piercing gun. It, yeah, it, that's, yeah. It's not for me. I'm sure it's lovely, but just, you know. I don't think I'd want nails that, uh, no, no, God, I'm sounding old now, aren't I? Who'd have thought, who'd have thought that at my age I wouldn't want nails up my nose? Oh, I got so old so quick. Oh, wait a minute, I never would have wanted that. That's true. Music. Making music was the one thing that felt familiar to me. Okay, right, so I'm going to, that might be, okay, I'm going to move off of this, I'm going to try and find another, another magazine, because that one's just, go away, so let's go to, I'll tell you what, should we do the, 
United Kingdom. Oh no, let's do United States. No, United Kingdom. Let's do go for some of these magazines and let's have a look at lifestyle okay actually this today those kind of i want to see some of the agony aunts that's what i want to look at because they're usually quite funny so let's have a look at woman's own shall we they don't seem to aim them at there's no men's own i don't know why So here's Woman's Own, and right, this is doesn't even have the. That's weird. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know what date this was. I want to know what date it is so that I don't. I'm not reading something from years ago. Woman's Own. Oh no, woman's own. This might be one that I've already read before. Why has it got no no date on it? I don't understand. Uh, there's no date on it. See all issues. 3rd of October, okay, it does go with a date on it. So the first advert, don't miss out, is perfect time for planting. The best hardy shrub for year round colour. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't, you know what? I've never really been, never really been, um, Right. Huh. I just got uh, just got interrupted. Then had a phone call from a neighbour. Needed help. The heating wasn't coming on. So the hot water was working, but the thermostat completely broken. So I've been on the phone for about. 25 minutes to the council and while we were down there Vinny my little baby boy here got to meet her new little baby boy and Vinny wasn't that friendly because he's just a puppy he's only probably a few months old bigger than, bigger than Vinny already it's going to be a big dog. But he wasn't... Vinny was not friendly at all. I don't know. It was because it was very... I suppose there was so much excitement from the other dog. And I guess because it was in his environment. But at the same time, that's the same flat that my friend used to live in. So in Vinny's mind, he might think it's still his home. Or it's still kind of his his territory, rather. So he's gone in there and because he's always had a fuss, he gets a fuss from uh, a few of the neighbours that live here and she's one of the people that gives him a big fuss. So I think he was jealous, possibly. And then I was giving the other dog a lot of fuss and he didn't like that. Vinny didn't like that. It's weird. I could pick the other dog up and cuddle him. Vinny won't let me do that. Well, he will, but you know, he's not really a, it's not really what he likes to do. But to be fair, <laughs> you got to make the most of cuddling them dogs, picking them up when you can, because a few months' time it'd be too big to pick up. Anyway, so I can't remember exactly what I was talking about, but I'm on woman's own. Well, welcome to this issue. Is bursting with expert tips to get you looking and feeling fab for the autumn. Okay, right, so 
cover story Lisa Riley the joy of saying no is fantastic um, well, I guess that's not about cakes then uh, Vanessa felt I don't want to blend in <laughs> no chance if that happened um, oh god I'm being oh what a bitch photo that's me photo fun self care celebs photo fun do blondes have more fun I don't care features real life I couldn't outrun my food addiction uh, health report how healthy is your air fryer I mean take it to the do take it to the doctor if you want to find out I don't know uh, healthy eating that'd be a weird one yeah, I'd like to make an appointment please okay who's it for well it's my air fryer just a health check please healthy eating stay full get slim fashion 20 of the best pink buys beauty how to beauty how to it's not even a sentence morning fresh so I don't know what that's about it sounds like um, uh, you know it's morning fresh I don't know it sounds a bit I don't know. It sounds just like one of them things. Things that, yeah. Autumn hair inspiration. Uh, then you've got well-being. Gets SEX on your schedule. 22. Are you harming your health? 24. Beauty on a budget. Then you've got tasty recipes. Uh, instant youth boost. Cure it with a cuppa. Health. Okay, really? Cure it with a cuppa? Cure what with a cuppa? Health, what your body noises really mean. 52. Why is anger on the rise? Number 54. Try a group workout class. Then your next one is 10 ways to have a great hair day. And the next three is a 10 of the best sleep buys. Upgrade your first aid kit. Magic mascara. Okay, right. So it's not... Uh, it's not letting me go to any page for specifically. Uh, Lisa Riley, the big change that left her feeling happy. Since her stint on Strictly Come Dance in 2012. Okay, so we're talking about something that happened 12 years ago. Okay. Lisa Riley has gone through an impressive transformation. She lost 12 stone, blimey. The thing is, Lisa Riley was... She was in... Uh, Emmerdale and she's very popular and suddenly she was on telly like doing all these like, quiz shows and she was hosting blimey what did she host she hosted oh I can't remember what it was but she hosted some like proper prime time family entertainment shows and she yeah, I think she got a bit of... She just lost weight and stuff. and Good on her. I mean, I've been going through that similar thing myself. Vanessa Feltz. The thing is, in all fairness, for me, because she's, she's like 50, she's 48. I'm a little bit older than that. A little bit younger, maybe. So... I think for the weight thing, I don't really have a choice. It wasn't it wasn't so that I look better. It was because, you know, I was on the verge of being diabetic. So I had to cut out sugar and cakes and biscuits and all the nice things that I enjoy eating. So, and it wasn't about losing weight. I lost weight, but it was about health. It was about cutting down on sugar, not about how I look. Because, let's face it, not any nothing I do is going to make me look even more sexy than I already do. Um, I realise I'm missing a lot out here. Apparently, yeah, there's other stuff. I'm not going to talk about this. Um, I'm happy Vanessa Feltz is another one. Vinny's about to bark any second now because I just heard the door go. Ooh, how healthy is your air fryer? Now, I don't have an air fryer. 
So I don't know whether or not... It, I mean, I've been told it's good. But I don't know. Maybe I need to get one. Is it quite healthy? This is how we can find out, isn't it? How healthy is your air fryer? I've got a friend who's got one. And she uses it a lot to cook. So I don't know. I mean... I quite like the idea of it. It's quick, apparently. According to this, it's quick and convenient. But whether this gadget is, whether this gadget delivers on nutritional value is up for debate. Wouldn't that depend on what you put in it? I'm just thinking, you know, just. So anyway, loved by celebrity chefs and social media fans alike. It's no surprise that, surprise that the air fryer has become the must own kitchen device of the decade 12 million people in the UK have got one including Gordon Ramsay <laughs> I don't know why why they mentioning he's got one as well why not Stephen Smith who lives in Cornwall why not mention him why why, why always a celebrity <laughs> hmm I think they're trying to sell air fryers I think it's a big advert that's what I'm thinking I'm guessing at the end of this, it's not going to say that it's unhealthy. That's my okay. That's my prediction. All right, it's my little prediction. My little little prediction. That's that at the end of this article, it's a two-page article. It's going to come out at telling you that it's healthy. So that's the question: How healthy is your air fryer? So. Yes, air fryers cook food fast, but this means new users may find themselves accidentally overdoing it more often and charred food is a possible. So it's easy to cook. It's easy to eat processed food. But that's that. The thing is, if you use it to cook processed food, then you're eating processed food. If you're using it to cook burgers and chips and stuff like that, then it doesn't matter if it's it's marginal isn't it so if you're having burger and chips and you do it in an air fryer as opposed to an actual fryer yeah there's going to be less oil less fat still chips and burgers though so uh, bring on the benefits so it's, it's saying that there's you know it's kind of saying that maybe you need to eat clean you know healthy food Used correctly, an air fryer could transform your health. Okay. There are a few harmful chemicals. What? There are fewer harmful chemicals. Compounds called advanced glycation end products. Gly advanced glycation end products can be pro-inflammatory in the body. And I don't even understand this sentence I'm reading. And are associated with some chronic disease. Blah, 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 blah. It can help you to slim. There can be up to 90% reduction in the oil left in food. After air frying. Compared with deep frying. Says Thalia. I don't know who Thalia is. Uh, experimenting is easy. Air frying could also offer you new ways to enjoy vegetables and other foods. Which you might traditionally find boring. Um, add water keep it clean care if your air fryer is vital to prevent odours malfunction blah blah add water pour so who are these people are saying whose suggestions Sarah suggests I don't know who these people are mix some baking soda with a little water to create a paste Apply the paste to any difficult areas and leave to soak for a few minutes before lightly scrubbing. Oh, it's about keeping it clean, I was going to say. It's... So I've got no idea if it's healthy. Still didn't find out, really. Staying full. Conquer your cravings and drop a dress size with our easy feel, great eating plan. Lose 5 LB in two weeks. Five pounds. Blue. Yes, it's a... See, for me, right, I lost, I don't know, over a stone. 
moving to a stone and a half, but over at least a stone and a quarter in probably four months. I did it slowly, gradually, almost unnoticeable. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just like, I'm not, I've actually seen healthy, young people, like there was someone at work, and he was only still in his 20s. Yeah, probably only about 26, 27 maybe, 26, 25, 26. And he went to the gym because he wanted to lose weight and he wanted to get more muscle and, you know, have his best body and that. But he really went for it big time and he ended up with loads of stretch marks. Not loads, but he got a lot of stretch marks that I don't think he would have had because he wasn't. He just did it so quickly. He lost a lot of weight really quickly. But he wasn't like, he was just quite a big bloke anyway. He wasn't, I don't think he was like fat so much because he was so young and it just, yeah. I don't know how to, what I'm saying, but it's just, it's just like, wow, stretch marks. But I don't have any stretch marks. So, because I haven't lost enough weight, that's why. But I'm I'm hoping to not have that because I didn't want to just because I physically, from a health perspective, I didn't need to lose twelve stone. You know, I didn't need to lose like huge amounts straight away. Otherwise, I would have done, and I probably would have been walking around with a big, yeah, you know, with some loose skin maybe but I haven't had that issue I just had to lose some weight and I had to basically I had to lose fat it wasn't even about the weight I could walk around the same weight as I was before I could walk around a 16 stone but if it was muscle and my BMI was low and my blood sugar level was good and my cal um, cholesterol was good my blood pressure was good. It's not really an issue. I mean, technically, 16 stone, which is 220, 25, I don't know, pounds. I mean, that is is quite heavy for a four foot two. But it's still, you know, it's, it's, not, it's about build, isn't it? Top. Five top weight loss secrets. Eat fiber. All fruit and vegetables contain fiber. Fiber? Fiber. But juice and strips it out. That's true, but you can. No, juicing, right? Okay. Fair enough, but you can still have fiber in it. The only thing about juicing is it takes the skin off. But you can still have, you can still put some pulp into the into the because you've got pulp, pulp at the end of the juice or the bottom of the juice or whatever it is in the lid I forget it's been years since I did that so you can still ha add it to it um, add protein it keeps blood sugar levels steady, steady so you avoid spikes and falls that leave you hungry start the day with a poached egg or bacon and try adding beans and lentils to stews and sauces I don't think bacon's really a thing I should start. <laughs> I don't think this time in my life I should start introducing bacon first thing in the morning. Um, bacon sandwich. That's probably not a good introduction. Uh, go slow. So number three, it can take your stomach half an hour to register that you're full after eating. So eat at the table with someone else and you'll eat slower and are more likely to eat less. And let, well, they, you say that, but what about if the other person is even like greedy than you are? And you know that if you don't eat it quickly enough, they're going to start eating it. Huh? See? Give it a half hour before dessert. You might not really need it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to speak for every single dessert eater on the planet here. I want to ask a question. I know what the answer is. Is there one person listening to this recording right now that eats a dessert 
after dinner that eats a dessert after a meal because you really need it. Come on. I can be completely stuffed. Food literally still falling out of my mouth because I've eaten so much. I've still got room for some ice cream. You know, I mean, not now, but in the past when I <laughs> was happy. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, you don't need, we don't have a dessert because we need it. For me, a dessert was always um, a reward for eating that horrible stuff beforehand. You know, the stuff that's healthy. Anyway, number four, bulk up. High volume foods and snacks will fill you up quickly. Popcorn is popcorn is great for this, and ten grams of popcorn is just fifty five calories. Really? I didn't know that. But what about the ones covered in syrup and sugar and toffee? I bet that they're a little bit more than fifty five calories. Switch your sugar. Uh, so this is the fifth one. This is a five top weight loss secrets. A naturally occurring sugar called ol oligofructose could help to tap the effects of hunger hormones because it can't be processed by digestive enzymes. In research, people give given an eight gram daily dose of oligofructose eight ten percent fewer calories. Try bio. Oh. This, this is quite interesting to me, actually. So it, it's coming here. It's saying start smart snacks. A hard-boiled egg with two oat cakes, lightly spread with low-fat soft cheese. Next one is a handful of soya nuts, roasted soya beans. In brackets. And six cherry tomatoes. The next one is... I'm guessing this isn't all one big snack. Because it's not... A, eating all that in one go is probably not a, a smart snack. It's um, a lot of food. Lean chicken salad sandwich with a single slice of whole meal bread. What? A lean chicken salad sandwich made. I was going to say, it's like... Why would you have a sandwich and then have a, a slice of whole meat bread? Whole meat? Whole meal bread. I, I, I did it to it. I did it. One day I will learn to speak. The next one is apple with a handful of almonds. Mmm, yum, 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 an apple. I don't think I've ever once... Been hungry and thought to myself, I wish I had an apple. Now, you know, because you say, so why? To be fair, if I'm hungry, I've, I've had apples when I've been hungry in the past. I want to say hungry, I mean just like generally hungry, not hungry, hungry, but just, you know, hungry. Apples didn't really quite hit the point, hit the mark. It didn't quite... Hmm. Although I did quite like... I used to like eating apples because it made me feel refreshed. There was a nice feeling in my mouth. I quite liked the, uh, you know, eating apples. It felt quite nice. It's always like cleaning your teeth, but at the end of it having bits of apple... Crust, not crust, peelings or, you know, stuff, the skin, yeah, apple skin stuck in between your teeth, that was good. So I guess that would be quite a good way to, maybe that was nature's first dental floss, apple skin. So people would eat the apples, the skin would get stuck in between the teeth, they'd pull it out, which would then pull out anything else that was stuck in there. See? He's a genius, he's a genius. If only he knew, if only he knew he's a genius. 
Okay, plain yogurt with sliced strawberry topped with a sprinkle of linseeds. I know what yogurt is, so I didn't know. I know it's strawberries are, but linseeds? Don't know. The next one, a smoothie made with yogurt, frozen berries and all almond milk, and then a bowl of veggie sticks with one tablespoon of low-fat yogurt dip. So this is the Get Slim, your easy eating plan. You know what? I might actually do this. I, I like to make fun of things, but I might actually do this because this might be a good way to do it because it's healthy. So what's the first one? Breakfast. A pot of fat-free Greek yogurt with a handful of berries, strawberries or blueberries are always a good option. And one TBSP, they're being a little bit lazy. I'm guessing that's T two one oh tablespoon TBSP one tablespoon of nuts and seeds sprinkled on top. Is that it? That's that's the whole breakfast. How's they gonna start me for the whole day? Huh. I prefer ready brick, but that's just me. Lunch, Tuscan bean lentil soup served with an unbuttered, unbuttered, crusty wholemeal roll. Unbuttered. Right, okay, okay, so let, let's just rewind this one. Now, a crusty wholemeal roll, yeah, that is cool. Unbuttered? Am I the only one here? But I'm not the only one here. But am I the only one that sometimes when I go for a meal, which I haven't done for blimey many many years, they go to a natural restaurant and they serve bread rolls. The bread rolls are the best part of the whole meal, especially if they're fresh and they're crusty and they're, maybe they're warm. And they, you put butter on them and... Oh, I just love it. That's kind of my favourite thing. I want a bread roll now. See, when, when I did... Uh, I did this course... In... 2000... I think it's 2012. And it was a week-long course... It was a counselling course that was it was being arranged by Mind, so I was I was counselling for Mind at the time, and they organised this course where all the counsellors ha had to go on this week course. I keep saying the word course for some reason, and it was dealing with a specific subject. So we we went on we did that, but every day, ironically, it was literally. At the hotel just up the road from where I live. Well, it's it's a walk, but it was it was that place. I didn't even know where this place was, and I'd never been to that hotel before. But it was in the function room, and they used the function room for the the whole thing. And then we ate down in the restaurant, which I didn't know. I know where it is now. It's downstairs and. It was just very strange that, because um, I'd never been in there before. I haven't been in there since. Not not the restaurant. No, I haven't. Wow. But anyway, we did that, and it was a every every time we had our lunch, there was loads of bread rolls out. And I was just stuffing them in because the bread rolls were better than the food. There was nothing wrong with the food, but the bread rolls were just so yummy, yummy. And after the second day, they limited us to one bread roll each. So you, they was in baskets before. On the third day, they just had one roll on a little plate next to each place. I was like, what, what? They, they said, what? 
why? Why? Where's the bread rolls? He said, no, there's no more. That's, that's all the bread rolls we've got. I said, what? He said, uh, you'd, we can't afford to give you any more bread rolls. You've used up uh, all the bread, nearly, for the whole country in the first two days. There's a bread shortage. There's a bread roll shortage in this in this town. And I said, is that, tr <laughs> is that true? And he said, no. He said, but we've got you on camera stuffing them in your mouth and putting them in your pockets. I said, I never, ever stuffed them in my mouth. I ate them slowly. Um, so, day two, day three, porridge made with skimmed milk, lunch, whole meal, pita bread stuffed with roasted red peppers, feta cheese and basil leaves. I'll tell you what I did notice, though, in 2004, when I lost... I don't know how much loss, weight I lost, but I got down to 11 and a half stone, which was supposedly my ideal weight for my height. And I was very slim. I got down. I wasn't like skinny, but I was waist wise, I was very slim. And I was pretty much eating vegetarian food the whole of that year. It seemed to do the job. This looks like quite a good diet, you know, but I need help. I mean, just generally in life, I need help. But I mean, specifically for this, where do we get wholemeal toast from? See, again, this is breakfast, a slice of wholemeal toast, but it doesn't say anything about butter or not. Three tablespoons of baked beans and sautéed mushrooms. For breakfast, sautéed mushrooms. I don't even know how to sauté a mushroom. Lunch, wholemeal pasta salad with tuna or salmon. Cherry tomatoes. Not cherry, <laughs> cherry tomatoes. <laughs> okay. Have you got any really, really happy tomatoes, please? I need the cheery ones. Oh, dear. <laughs> And black olives. <laughs> this looks quite interesting actually. But the way I work. Is I eat the same thing every day. So I would need to just choose. What breakfast I wanted to eat every day. And I realise that's probably not the best way to do it. Because the more varied the diet the better. But I'm looking at the breakfast. Two scrambled eggs with a smoked salmon and half an avocado chopped in. Where would I get a chopped avocado? Where would I get half of an avocado? You know? Do they sell them in halves? Then I suppose one... I'd have to get three and a half a week. So I would, they would need to be able to sell them in a half if I was going to get seven ahead, you know. Banana smoothie made with almond milk and a handful of berries. That's not a breakfast. That's, that's not, a, I'm sorry, it's not. I don't mean to be rude, but it's not. It's not, I'm angry. <laughs> Never been so angry. I couldn't outrun my food. Okay. After Deco. I think it's quite interesting that people, once they get to a certain age, they kind of. They manage to do what they want to do, you know, when it comes to maybe weight or, you know, maybe it's. I mean, it's taken me. I've been. Apart from that June 2004 I've pretty much been overweight for 25 years nearly 24 years apart from that year 2004 and then yeah then I started getting heavier again and it was it was manageable when I was walking around at I don't know 13 stone I was I wasn't slim, but I was still okay, you know. But 
once I reached 14 stone, I felt like a whale. And which is weird because I don't feel particularly fat and I'm nearly 15 at the moment. I think I might have put some weight on since I lost it. But I am working out with weights every day, at least three or four times a day. So I'm thinking if I've got some muscle being put on, that 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 might weigh a bit. But I'm thinking, maybe. I don't know. Or well, it might be all the KFCs I eat. I thought KFC was healthy. So get... Nope, I don't want that. I don't like adverts about naughty stuff. Isn't it weird? i tell you what. To tell you how things have changed for me since I was younger. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was watching... Oh, what was his name? What was the TV show? It was about a fixer. And it was... Oh no, another one. Power. Power was a TV show I watched. Power. So I watched all the episodes. And... I kept skipping through all the love scenes because I don't want to watch that anymore and I skipped through it and I so I can get to the dialogue and the action and stuff I didn't want to see that it's like it's wasting my time and I remember thinking it's the complete opposite to what I used to do I used to have it on like video recorders you used to be able to play one frame at a time And I used to do that in the love scenes. The amount of video recorders I broke because I was kind of just pressing a button continuously so it was one frame at a time. Like, obviously, if you, okay, I'm not going to say it's like silly like using my left hand. So, head to head toe, uh, crunchy fish cakes, prevent, banish blemishes, too late. It's too late for me for that. Um, UV, U, UV rays trigger a malfunction in our skin, causing it to cut. Um, I'm a little bit confused about this because they. Um, you can't see what I can see. If you could see what I see, you might wonder what, what they're talking about. Because it's... Yeah, it doesn't... Okay, it's not, not aimed at me. But it's not saying who it's aimed at. Women's own bingo, join the fun. Add £10... Get fifteen pound bingo bonus. No. Um, okay, right. So there's a serious thing. I'm not going to read that. Why we're nope again. Another serious, serious. Nope. Another serious. Super serious. Nope. 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 But I'm not serious. Serious. God, they're really covering this full on. Master the age of. Most of the age defying brows and look 10 years younger. If you notice that no one ever wants to trim their eyelashes though. No one ever pulls their eyelashes out today. I was just thinking about that. Thought I might tr start a new trend. I used to know uh, there was this girl at school when I was a kid. And she used to have these eyelashes. And this is probably during the... What's her name? Um, All I do to do to you Think of you uh, da, da, da. You said Go slow Not Tracy Ullman um, Girls just want to have fun Oh girls want to have fun That one um, I would say she was The The precursor to Madonna, to be fair. I would say she was first doing it, before Madonna. But Madonna just became much bigger. Because she was kind of a, a rebel, wasn't she? Uh, so, 
Oh, what's her name? Not Tracy Ullman. Anyway, the one that some girls just want to have fun. She used to, in one of her videos, she wore a really huge, huge eyelashes. And there's this girl at school that used to do that. She has these big, big, false eyelashes on. And like really, really eyes. And she struggled to get her eyes open. And I remember she used to moan at me for like, because I'd walk in front of her really slowly and and she'd be quite close and she like she thought I was being a bit weird um, and I said like I said don't worry about it I said well, can you walk a bit faster she would be walking home and I'd be just only literally maybe a foot away from her two foot away from her and she'd be like oh can you just can you walk a bit faster and what she didn't realise is I was actually sheltering myself from the rain under her eyelashes but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to be rude. But she did. She had the strongest uh, eyelids in the world. It was quite good because there was this problem. There was a bridge collapsed like near where we lived. And she helped. Uh, there was a car. And it was like literally just balancing off the end of the, of the broken part of the bridge. And luckily she just used her eye, eyebrows, or well, her eyelids rather, and pushed it up and like saved the people in the car. So it was really good. And then she used both of, the, both of her eyelids and she lifted the bridge, the broken part of the bridge back up and put it. <laughs> in fact, um, there was another issue. There was a train uh, a train, um, the track came off. And like, oh no, what are we going to do? We can't stop the train. It was a bit like Speed, the Speed movie, but without... It's just because they couldn't get it to, in time. And oh, what are we going to do? We can't, there's like 7,000 people on the train. And uh, what she did, she, she just went underneath it. And luckily, because she dug a hole underneath the... Very quickly because she was also half mole and she put her eyelid, our eyelids and eyelashes just between the track and the train went over it fine when I say fine um, you know but you know it's still, it's still good a bit bumpy uh, a few of the wheels got ruined But yeah, she's. Uh, hope she's well. I don't don't know. She used to have really, really massive eyelashes, like bigger than what you would see ever. Like if you look at, if you think of the person with the biggest eyelashes you've ever seen, her eyelashes were bigger. Guaranteed, it was. I don't know because. Uh, I suppose she at the time she was a chimney sweeper's dream just stick her on a broom and push her up and down a chimney cause, and just turn her around swivel her and that would just clean out the whole chimney with those eye eyelashes so but by then it was kind of not allowed to send kids up chimneys anymore I just kind of missed that period by about 30 years or something, I don't know. Probably not a lot. I imagine chimney. When did chimney sweepers stop sending kids up there? Probably not that long ago, before I was a kid. I, I want to check it, but I'm not going to. I'm guessing probably the 60s, 50s. I mean, it didn't. I think in the uh, Victorian days, kids were sent up and they didn't kind of any have any choice. But, you know, post-war time, they would have, you know, in like the 40s and 50s, they probably had a choice. It was more like being an apprentice or something. 
I don't know. Pocket money. Whistling nostrils. What the? What's this about? What your body noises really mean? From gas to gurgling. No, okay, okay, I do feel I need to look at this. Creaky knees. Noisy when you bend or squat. You're talking about knee, knees now, are you? Sometimes it's a cartilage rubbing over an area of uneven bone. I tell you what, because I do squats every day now, I'm not talking about going to the toilet. I'm talking about uh, weights. So I lift weights because i got arthritis in my lower back. Uh, I did physio and they told me, do squats, but it's better to do it with weights because then you're really building the muscle up in your lower back, which helps to support your back. So that's what I do every day. I'm now up to about, I can do 70 now. Um, I don't, I don't like push myself. Just, I just do it. And with the weights, I can, I've got up to about 70 today. I do it once a day and I hold the weights and I bend my knees. I put, I put my legs apart and my feet facing forward, but I do it in a way so that my knees don't click. So if I need, I move my feet and I move my legs to the position where they don't click. If they click, I don't do it. You know, I, I make sure that my knees are comfortable. And in some ways, it's like my leg muscles are now building up and I can, but that's not the reason I'm doing it. I'm doing it really for the lower back. So yeah, and that's the thing though, because I can't, there was a time when I was like a kid, teenager, first going to the gym, going doing weights, I could pull muscles and whatever, and they'd heal within a short while. You know, I'd, like within about 20 minutes, it'd be healed. Now, eh, not so quickly. Clicking jaw. Okay. All right, I'm not going to look into that. It's too much. I want to go to medical. Oh, what? Antoxic antoxidants. Antoxidants. I need to do that as well. I need to. I really want to. See, I don't cook meals. I don't make meals or dishes. You know, like. Um, shepherd's pie. Lasagna. Things like that. I could, but I don't. Because I can't be bothered. <laughs> it's true. This one. Why is anger on the rise? Here are reasons and remedies for feeling full of rage. Cool off quickly. Feeling it isn't the problem. Anger is a natural emotion. It's how we deal with that. It that matters. Seeing red. Here's what to do, says Jennifer. Who's Jennifer? I don't know who Jennifer is. Who's Jennifer? Oh, it's Jennifer Cox. She's the person that is interviewing or whatever. A change of scenery can be useful. Take yourself off to the toilet. It's not really a change of scenery, is it? I mean, for me, scenery, I think of trees and... Because Germany's a great place for trees. I found out. I didn't, you know, earlier on. So it's great. All countries have trees. It's lovely. And... Bit of toilet. I don't ever think like I've never been on a beach looking out to the sea and thinking I need to look at something different. I need a change of scenery. A change of scenery. I go and do a poo. Yeah? It's like where's a local there's a toilet, a public toilet. No. But hey. Or another room or outside. So basically it's not so changes it. Move. Go somewhere else, basically is what they're saying. The second cool off quickly, splash some cold water on your face and wrists. So to cool you down. Good idea. Uh, I'd, what, your neck as well, possibly. And do s your whole body, I suppose, if you want to, I guess. I don't know. Do some star jumps or run on the spot. That's not going to cool you down, though, is it? It might cool your mood down, but... This helps to discharge angry energy. 
star jumps or run after 20 star jumps I think I'll be angrier <laughs> roll your shoulders back to a relaxed position then take slow deep breaths yep I'm all for that uh, slowly and calmly count from 10 down to 0 until your emotions become more regulated yeah that's my idea yeah it is count down I mean I've got a different version of that my version is count down from 10 down to 1 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 10, 9, 8, 7 do it as quickly as you can and just keep repeating it because eventually you'll start to slow down and as you count down slower you your mind becomes slower and your breathing becomes slower and you start to relax so yeah so mine's a little bit different from the counting down from 10 to 1 but that is another way the, the only reason I did it like that or that I've kind of thought that is because I've asked people in the past this is back years and years ago thinking well, I'll try and help them to calm down I uh, said so if you just count down 10 down to 1 and they they reeled off the 10 to 1 in about 2 seconds I said okay you're not really getting this are you and they couldn't do it slowly they couldn't do it slowly because that's how they were feeling so it's I guess it's about starting where the person is meeting them where they already are and then moving somewhere else it's uh I suppose it's like a a motorway you know when you kind of move into a motorway and you gradually kind of mingle with the traffic get back to class get back to class group workouts yeah. 60% of Brits say that it's important to exercise with others if you're to enjoy your workout found a survey by one poll uh, I'd quite like to do something like Aquazumba the problem is it's not fair on everyone else to see me in my uh, swimming costume here's it okay 10 of the best sleep buys earplugs <laughs> yeah I used to wear earplugs these they look quite good actually but I my problem is um, I pushed them in too far once and I woke up and I had perforated my eardrum and yeah that wasn't good best relaxing sense these are things that I could have on my website anything to do with sleeping CBD oils I don't know what the rules are legal rules are for that stuff like that I guess they must be legal if they're being selling them on here the best mini fan sunset lamp supplements okay right so Vinny's starting to uh, get a little bit restless after what reading all this about healthy food and dieting it's made me uh, it's really given me some um, motivation energised me in fact enthused me I would say so when I finish this recording I'm going to put the I'm going to put the oven on I'm going to put the oven on I'm going to cook a pizza nice frozen pizza oh yeah woman and home Christmas cookbook 160 recipes and ideas wow it looks nice the picture on the front looks nice it's a Christmas cake not cake Christmas pudding but blimey I don't know what's 
There's all kinds of things on there. Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to start cooking. Start cooking and I know someone that, uh, oh, this is weird. This is the end. I thought there'd be some kind of um, celebrity fun photo. All right, I thought there would have been some kind of um, agony aunt, but there isn't on here. Get class wise. No, there isn't an agony aunt in this one. So I've been reading Woman's Own. Life. Oh, it's a lifetime special, that's why. Blimey. Lifetime special. So if I'd have got the. How often do they come out then? This one's the 3rd of August, 4th of July, 15th of May, 4th of April. Woman's Own is like once a month. That's no good. Come on. Come on. Once a month's no good. So let's have a look. Lifestyle, I would say. Lifestyle categories. Lifestyle. 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 Okay. So you've got take a break. That's what I'm after. Take a break. 10th of October. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Take a break. Confessions. I just want to see... I solved 37 year, 37 year mystery on Facebook. Okay. So let's have a look if there's an agony page, like agony on, telling us, smarten up. Actually, you can skip through the pages and you can see how, how much adverts there are. A few, there's a few adverts. Um, Let's have a look. Oh, is it, there's an article about me there. I'm a babe magnet. Oh, okay. She's got a pig, a little piglet. Wow. That would do it. You know what? The amount of people that would be like, wow. you got a little pig. Can I say hello? I mean, even, I was going to say, people in the street. You see, everyone you see. Ambulance drivers, fire service, hospital staff, nurses, I suppose all of the emergency services would be happy to see a little piglet, oh, um, I suppose, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's have a look. Uh, so this is gone really quick. Sell your story for cash. No. Real pen... Real pen, real prizes, readers to the rescue. How can I ever, to, to read it to her, whatever, just, right, I'm going to go, so I'll just have a look a bit, look at this, but that looks quite interesting. So I just thought I'd go, I just want to check one little thing and it's otherwise it's gonna bug me. Um when when Okay. <laughs> In 1875, a bill was pushed through Parliament which put a stop to the practice of using chimneys, uh, children as chimney sweeps. <laughs> but they use them because they could fit up there. I mean, it makes sense in a way, but blimey. 1875. That's quite a long time ago. I didn't really think it was... I thought maybe it was the, the 50s. Maybe 1950s. Uh, so, yeah. 
okay, it basically because it, yeah, something happened and it's that's why. Blimey. I didn't think that 1875 they cared too much about kids back then. Wow. Isn't it weird? Anyway, good, good on them. So I'm going to go. Thank you. This is my Sunday mag Saturday magazines. Thanks for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without 
necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really it was as if my body knew exactly what to do and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room. 
on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And it's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily 
focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. <sighs> Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice to, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly.
completely. Unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. completely free noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs And 
the feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. in the feelings in the back of your neck feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace. spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower.
very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine from your brain all the way down the middle of your back sending and receiving millions of messages every day Comfort increasing. Deeply relaxed. your knees Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your elbows, 
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back and letting go really letting go Peace. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away happy to let go let go completely let go So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even
enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
drifting. Peaceful energy of noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Drifting.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And 
things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come now I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead just being aware of the feelings of your forehead and any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed it just means you're in the moment this isn't this isn't a sterile environment this is the world I live in the countryside so there's lots of nature sounds around so as you focus on your forehead just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body moving down to your eyes focusing on your eyes noticing how the your eyelids feel so heavy yet so light at the same time and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely moving your focus down to your mouth your lips your tongue your teeth and your gums and the whole of your mouth relaxing calm and loose As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm focusing on your neck the front of your neck and your throat relaxing and loose and calm the sides of your neck the right and left side of your neck relaxed and loose and calm of your neck 
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back, as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser, the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. that spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and even though we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine, Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And they're feeling 
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. so soft and gentle, so smooth, and calm, and the feeling shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just traveling deeply into your muscles but also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your arms. You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread all the way into your wrists, your forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle. Focus 
sin. Now on your hands. a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar relax deeply feels fingertips attention to the front of your body Focus. 
muscles in your thighs. Your knees so relaxed. muscles and your shins completely
jingle of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now. From 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
you focus on your eyes. We're going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find So all you want to do is just drift off to sleep. And if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that. Now, focus in on your eyes going to begin counting down from 10 down to 1 right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there, like 
If you're counting down from ten to one, what do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? We could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four. Three, two, How does your body feel now? Can you notice that the you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I sure I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something? Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors, otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you And you can still have that attention on your thighs. And maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs 
your shins and your calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet incorporating of course your ankles so important you know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet. That thin area, a thin bone. Yet it does so much great work supports us, supports our body for a lifetime helps us to balance helps you to get around and be mobile and there's the calf muscles of course When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. It didn't seem to do anything. I thought, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins there to protect your lower legs shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet We're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. And it's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, and to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. And that might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves, your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs They're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are, truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight Regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down as in fact my whole legs do my feet my feet also go and my toes clap they're so happy Your legs really are amazing. And I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the among the most Im, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. going to count down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally. And part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing 
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you 
you may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more And more relaxed. Starting with number seven.
imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing focusing on your hands noticing how they feel because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. And you In just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers more and more relaxed with each number from eight one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands and fingers becoming with each number 
just in again. Starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and 
anxiety, tension. Just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. You're left with a real sense of peacefulness. Which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. Place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. healing energy soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body You start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health. 
things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try to stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow transforming your life in positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness. It just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be and that positivity grows within you each and every day moving forward going to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises you can just say stop stop and that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? It feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that heat healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. It doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, it doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Which makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. You can continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Nine. 
routine. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Eight, seven, six, This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's 
kind of expected. You expect, when you listen to my voice, to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. down, your mind relaxes, and even though we've not really started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. brain fills with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort and relaxation increases. in a way that your mind starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed start to drift if that's what's needed so if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also what will happen. Be 
speakers by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me. You give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax deeply and to drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, and when you come back again, and you hear me talking, and I'm focusing on a different part of your body, yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting and you alert again to my voice, focusing on a different part of your body, starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting Basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, eventually that drifting continues into sleep. the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do fall asleep it's so nice to relax into your own body and mind as you, f- as you feel that healing energy spreading through you relaxing you so deeply relaxing you so on your eyes moving down to your jaw
chest. Your stomach. Your back. Your spine. Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focus in on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now they almost seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end it's almost as if they just mix together Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focus in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. Thank you. 
sensations in your ankles. Noticing now your toes on both of your feet. Being aware of how your toes feel. to sin. Letting go. Letting go. Letting. go letting go letting I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported 
and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel you feel confident in how you look as well so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and I'll move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and there's a massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck. 
especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. And then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, Sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in. To get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area. To your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just. Pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. Just to give you a little bit of a stretch. But very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure. Quite a bit of uh, needing, if, if you wish, to really... Release the tension to really get into those muscles and you can let your fingers in there and it can feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms we do one arm at a time Starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up. Just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. down to your forearms 
into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. You can feel nice and you can feel safe. As I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down.
start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again where you already be at been, that area at the top, in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke to the middle of your back. Working from the outside inwards, so massaging the your back, but the the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. Almost the part that connects your front to your back. And just massaging down firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down. Moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle. Yet firm as you choose. And eventually we get to the spine. We can massage the muscles on either side of your spine. From the top of your neck all the way down. To your lower back. We can do that a few times. Sometimes people would use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down. Go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body. Stretching your body. So that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, I'm going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side. Or to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged releases so much from your body that's not useful starting a healing process 
which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is pressing and kneading firm and gentle at the same time it feels so releasing. This is a mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. And now we're going to move or we'll move further up to your top of your body, and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mess it, massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest it's all connected the chest and the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back, doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging 
the back and the sides of your thighs gently and firmly there's a lot of muscles there it's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body but that's up to you You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose using both hands and fingers digging deep to your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, and this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles Massaging your calf muscles 
firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Now, as you turn over in your mind, laying on your back, I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to get back in touch with that area. And as we move up. I can clean my hands. Make them more fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead. If your eyes are closed and I can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, your chin. Just moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up. Stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And then moving down again. And then allowing my hands. 
hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down to just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well. An area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms, all the way down to your hips. Moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently, massaging. From one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. I'm going to move around to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling, as I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. And moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins, putting 
pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet. feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling deep going to do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. as we move down the numbers you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed and if you need to sleep 
you'll also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed, more and more deeply tired. down, the more your mind starts to drift, and you may find that you stop listening to me after a while. be background sounds where you are, you'll be aware of those sounds at the moment, you may start to just not even notice them. at all, because they're unimportant, where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Horace the pigeon, who likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by, maybe traffic and trains in the distance, but none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out the less important anything is the more candles you blow out the further you seem to sounds and from general day to day stuff seems to just move away on its own as you feel number do you hear me say and then you blow that candle out too so easy 
so simple. We're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. When you blow that candle out, you'll find immediately a slight change. Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting. Six. Ninety-seven. 
twenty three.
52. Seventy eight candle seventy seven. Seventy-four.
Sendo. Sixty four Candle sixty three. Candle sixty nine. 
58. Fifty-six. Fifty four. Fifty two. Fifty. Candle. 
Forty-eight. Forty seven
handle.
28. Seven.
Commodore 17.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, That's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen. You've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say-so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's almost like a breath of relief. Ah, oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again. For a little while at least. And if you choose. You can just sit there. For maybe an hour or two. And it feels. Blissful. And just by sitting down. Like that. Your body knows. That it's time to relax. Your body. Has been given permission. From you. Because it's a mindset in your mind. You're prepared 
to let go of everything and just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate. Any tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien, but it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind. And it is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up and the energy that frenetic stressful energy gradually winding down losing its power losing its strength as the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper and you may find that the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop to the floor. You start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness different body parts as they become looser and looser. Even your breathing seems easier and more natural, effortless. 
this as that cool air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Breathe them in, comfort and relaxation. And then just breathe in out any excess remaining tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are, have come to a standstill or maybe just much, much slower than before. Because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed really is a great healing experience for you and has So many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body. Even your bones are relaxed. All your muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. So deeply relaxed. And your brain really starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. As you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain relaxing. sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeply. Just drop onto the floor. Because.
because they're no longer necessary in this moment. In this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling. Concentrated healing, calming, relaxing every part of your brain. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. You feel deeper and deeper relaxed, deeper and deeper relaxed. Calm. 
do a body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are to notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment so we're going to start off by focusing on your hands just be aware of your hands I'd like you to move your hands around just Maybe move your fingers a little bit. Open and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements focusing now on your feet and if you can just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands maybe turning your ankles moving your feet around moving your toes gently but only very gently and very slowly noticing how your feet feel in this moment Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes perhaps squinting your eyes scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch of all aspects of how your eyes feel right now now focusing on your thighs and I just ask you to gently tense your thighs just very very gently just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now moving your focus 
focus to the back of your neck, just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, Maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up. Maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down. Perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. But only very slowly very gently, you're not trying to force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feeling with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, parts where your biceps and your triceps are, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly. So you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms. It's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go, notice how the tops of your arms feel right now. As we now focus on your stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button. Moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin. Maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently. And slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this 
moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower abdomen. As we move your attention to your mouth. in your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels. it gently against the side of your mouth and then to the right, gently to the side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth. Always very slowly in a very, very gentle so that you can be aware of how you feel. on your wrists. And I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very Gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again very, very gently and slowly. Observe your lower back. And that back part is 
just above your hips, where your coccyx are, and a whole area which also really does include the sides of your body, because those muscles are very much connected. Those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hips. And if you're physically able to do so, Maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side, just enough for you to gauge how you feel in your lower back. Perhaps you could even move your hips gently up and down. Gently and slowly in order to really be in touch with the physical sensations of your lower back. As we now move your attention to your jaw, that area from your chin all the way up to near where your ears are. can just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and then closing your Gently and slowly. So you can be in touch with how your jaw feels. And now your chest area, and you don't need 
to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time you breathe and it moves very gently and slowly automatically to your forearms and your elbows maybe you are able to very gently and slowly tense the muscles in your forearms do that, you can feel your elbows as well. of your back, your upper back, and the middle, the middle of your back, again this part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice that. Usually as you observe
legs, your groin, those muscles and those bones, and your midsection. Just noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. side to side very gently and slowly very very Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind. And your mind itself just starts to gradually... It doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I feel in this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense, or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. 
starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings. Just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings of all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, the bones, just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm on your right arm? Your right forearm There may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to it may not feel like anything other than just a feeling you know it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. your lower back a 
left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips and also moving up into the middle of your back and sometimes like right now actually when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently, but just stretched a little bit, even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch your lower back it just seemed to happen the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back comes along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well mine aren't that different these days but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest but at the side and underneath it's pretty much the same whether you're a man or a woman there's muscles there muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest and when I notice that I focus on my chest I feel it in my, my back my upper back I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing in. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels... It feels okay. doesn't feel 
Got a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas. In your back. It feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, And you do tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax. It relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a uh, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect. 
to happen. For a relaxation. To fill your body. Maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away. Almost as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind. Just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. Find that every now and then you realize that you weren't listening to my voice. 
because your mind started to imagine something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel more comfort spreading through your body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature And even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. As that sense of peace spreads through your mind like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress that was there before and blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense of relaxation that is filling your body your mind and as you focus on your mind and you count down from ten down to one and with each number you hear your mind will become slightly more relaxed just just slightly so from 10 to nine, just a slight movement, nine down to eight, just 
another small change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. That feeling is is a gap, almost like a gap that starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now feelings of comfort and security and confidence and that gap becomes wider eight down to seven seven down to six when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. Almost like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want, sucking them out through your skull. And then down to four, you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness, but space. place full of fresh air, a place where you can stretch, it's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. As it moves down to two. When you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel. It's almost a perfect feeling. Maybe a, a sensation that you'd like to keep. A place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. stay in that that space of comfort and confidence confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 And this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. And just count slowly from ten down to one and re-experience these feelings in your mind and when 
when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. Can, we can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from ten down to one the feelings of comfort calmness and deep, deep relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals spread throughout your body, relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. So we're going to do it now. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1. And I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself 10. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. in your mind and your body. Then when I say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and Calmness in your mind and in your body. The same when I say eight. When I say seven. Six. When I say five. Four. When I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1, 
faster than I do, then go ahead and do that. Or if you feel when you do it yourself that you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers, maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. It's your choice also to do. So I'm going to count from ten down to one. And when I get to one, that will be the end of this recording. Unless, of course, you're listening with music, then the music will continue. Ten.
20. 19. 18. 17. 16. 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Now open your eyes. Noticing how you physically feel. Having counted down from 20 to 1. Allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is, I suppose, quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again, this time you're going to feel relief of tension and stress, any anxiety that you may have, leaving through your stomach, just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather so surrounding your belly button area that whole area you can feel the tension of your body whatever's left just releasing from that area and you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 
you can open your eyes again if you choose or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing just notice how your stomach feels and notice as you focus just do a little scan of your body just notice how your body feels focus in on your upper body your back chest stomach legs arms hands feet just noticing And you know you may start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording, because you would like to let go completely of everything and drift off into a nice, natural, calm, relaxing sleep so now we're going to focus on your forehead and if you choose you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well so your forehead and your eyes just that whole area basically Almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something, or I'm trying to find <laughs> Zorro or something, you know, the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. So focusing on that area, because that's the area that we're now going to release tension and stress from your mind your brain and from your mind and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, in your forehead or your scalp. So basically any tension within your head area, including your mind and your brain. And that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. in as you scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, the back 
back of your neck, in the front of your neck, the sides of your neck, in your throat. Noticing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck, also the rest of your body. Just notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily it is to just let go completely. Let go. do now is I want you to focus on the top of your head. And we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering or hiding in your body or mind or head to just be sucked out of the top of your head, released into the air, almost sucked out into the clouds. Imagine a big cloud above your head, almost like a whirlpool, and it's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head. Just take it away for good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head where that tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. Seven, six, five, four, three, two.
noticing how you feel. How relaxed and calm you physically and mentally feel. feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed peaceful in your mind relaxed in your body can feel so good, so nice to just not have to do anything, to be able to really enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space and you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. It's completely up to you. And you can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose to feel completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind that you're going to relax. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it? When you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way, that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax, relax, you know. Um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say it to yourself, it means more. It's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So, for example, 
we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I'm going to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you you might say relax or relax. You know, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax now. Now I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't but I wasn't focusing on it before so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings is still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of energy like not buzzing but I can kind of 
feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension has been released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself, but I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax, in your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally, but you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now, just say, relax to the back of your neck, and I'll do the same. Now what I noticed, and you may have had a similar thing, is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck, other parts started to, I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, the tension in my shoulders and in my upper back. Whether that was because my my back and my neck was saying, well, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my, lower, my, my back and my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. If you just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. And with me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more. Yeah, that's the parts that are really sort of uh, giving me the nod that it needs relaxing. So I'm just going to ask that part to relax. And you can do the same now. Relax your upper back. something strange happened there and this often happens I've been doing this for what, 16 years or something and often I don't know why I'm surprised but amazed really that 
it can be a feeling. So when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, just needs the attention. Just needs to be noticed. And that is something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body, as we've done with our hands, our eyes, our eyelids, and now back of the neck, top of the back, upper back, the rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing. Other parts of your body start to just become looser. I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know. The little ball starts rolling and before you know it, the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face, you focus on your eyes, your eyelids, your eyebrows and the muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. So we're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe you can see them in your mind's eye. And just tell your shoulders. To relax. Feels nice as they relax. But I do notice, probably especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts the back, the shoulders, the neck. being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body 
it's almost hard to separate them from each other. And my lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds and the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself relax without focusing on any particular part of your body because when you know that telling your hands to relax and your hands relax you tell your eyelids and your eyes the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax and they relax you tell the back of your neck to relax and it relaxes tell your upper back to relax and it relaxes you tell your shoulders to relax and they relax told your hands to relax they relaxed and they continued to relax and you told your eyelids the muscles around your eyes your eyebrows to relax they relaxed and continued to relax when you told the back of your neck focus on the back of your neck and told it to relax it relaxed and continued to relax You told your upper back to relax. It relaxed and continued to relax. As with your shoulders, you told your shoulders to relax and your Shoulders relaxed and continued to relax. And it's not just that. It's that the rest of your body 
has also been listening. And that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes to relaxation spread to your forehead. Around your face, into your skin, into your jaw. to the front and sides of your neck, all the way down your chest and stomach. Your relaxed hands and shoulders meet up through your arms, relaxing. Your forearms, your upper arms, your elbows, your wrists. Letting go. Your lower back. Your hips, buttocks, groin. All just start to relax or continue. Even more comfort. Spreading through your legs. All the way down to your ankles. The tops of your feet. The sides of your feet. And the bottoms of your feet. Relaxing. Into your toes. Each toe. Calm, loose, and as your body relaxes more, your mind becomes. Slower, more peaceful, to the point where if you choose to fall asleep, easily do that. Easily drift away. Because there's nothing going on in your mind. Your brain is peaceful. body continues to relax. between your body relaxing and the word that you say to yourself relax means that you don't need to focus on just one part you can just focus on your entire body word relax and the 
those uh, those familiar sensations of comfort spreading throughout your body. Loosening and calming and healing every part of your body. Feel more relaxed. So that all you need to do from now on is just tell yourself. Starting now with number 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen, sixteen, Fifteen, fourteen. Thirteen, Twelve,
seven.
to body has slowed down, the muscles are more relaxed, everything is calmer, as a cat say the word relax after each number and every time you hear that word relax you will feel twice as calm muscles in your body will feel twice as relaxed Starting 